The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. The book of Revelation is filled with dark and shadowy figures. The first of the four horsemen of the apocalypse rides the earth, bringing religious hatred and persecution. He's followed by his fellow horsemen, bringing war, famine, and pestilence. Later, we're introduced to the false prophet who was used by Satan to perform miracles, followed by the notorious and powerful person called the Beast of Revelation. Who is this beast and where is he going to appear from? Many of you have been fascinated by the prophetic potent of these personages. Most theologians and even local pastors know that it's best to stay well clear of the book of Revelation. But here at Tomorrow's World, we're not afraid to look into this mysterious book. That's what we're going to do today. We believe the Bible interprets the Bible. Symbols found in one book are used in another. When God's servants understand the big prophetic picture that starts in Genesis and ends in Revelation, the guesswork is taken out of it and a clear scenario is revealed. Don't be afraid to ask God to show you personally what the future has in store for you. We also understand that it is God and Jesus Christ who reveal understanding of prophecy to these servants today. So today we're going to reveal one of these personalities known as the Beast of Revelation and we're going to see where he fits into the events of the last few years just before Jesus Christ returns to earth. Be sure to request your copy of our booklet, The Beast of Revelation. It's free of charge and in it, you will find events and people to watch out for. You need to hear this vital information, so stay tuned. A warm greeting to our regular Tomorrow's World viewers, but also if you're joining us for the first time. You might not be aware that events occurring in Europe today are going to affect every person living on earth in the next few short years ahead. Did you know that Europe is once again set to play a vital role in world affairs? As we progress through the program today, you will understand why it is Europe that is going to play the most important part on the world stage in the next few years. After two disastrous world wars in the 20th century, Europe has been at peace now for nearly 70 years. In fact, the Nobel Peace Prize for 2012 was awarded to the European Union for bringing peace to their continent. Let's understand how the European Union got started. In 1957, the six founding nations of what is now the European Union signed the Treaty of Rome. They established the European Economic Community. The leaders of Germany, France, Italy and the three Benelux countries agreed to an ambitious plan. They wanted to slash red tape and remove customs barriers between each other so that the Europeans could be free to trade amongst themselves. Over the next 55 years, what has become the European Union has established its headquarters in the Belgian capital of Brussels. Many members of the Union share their own currency known as the Euro. But today the Euro currency is in trouble, with Greek, Spanish and Portuguese debt ringing alarm bells. So far, Germany has been drip-feeding these economies, but for how long can they do it? The European Central Bank Chairman, Mario Draghi, said recently, we will not let the euro fail. Let me make a clear point. 
It will take a crisis or a series of crises to force the Europeans to unite politically, economically, and finally, militarily. And Great Britain will not be in the new Europe that is coming. Either they will leave or they'll be kicked out. So where is Europe headed? Will it be the next world superpower? It is time for us to understand that what is happening in Europe is going to impact on other countries, including the United States. In today's program, we're going to see how Bible prophecy accurately predicts the future for Europe and how it will dominate the whole world for a short time. You can expect to see Europe replace America more and more in world affairs. Expect to see the rise of two great personages in Europe. One will be a great religious leader and the other a powerful civil and military personality called the Beast. Together they will bring Europe to be the major world power and so replace the United States of America. It won't be China, India, Brazil or Russia that will dominate the world. Bible prophecy reveals it will be a fascist revival in Europe that will bring about world domination. The process of Europe coming together to where it is today has been a gradual but relentless push toward greater fiscal and political union. Those who are alarmed at the undemocratic methods used to achieve this union are called Eurosceptics. Some of them fear that Europe's old autocratic ghosts of the past are ready to rise from the grave. And actually, that's exactly what Bible prophecy indicates will come to pass. Longtime viewers of Tomorrow's World will understand the pivotal part that Daniel chapter 2 plays in providing a framework for all end time prophecy. It's where it all begins. So let's start in verse 31. Daniel said to the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, You, O king, were watching and behold a great image. Now this image's head was of fine gold, its chest an arm of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze and its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. Daniel went on to identify the different parts of this image. He told the king, you are the head of gold. Now, of course, the king loved to hear that. He then went on to say that inferior kingdoms would come after his. It's widely understood that the next kingdom of silver was that of the Medes and Persians, followed by the Greek empire of bronze established by Alexander the Great. The fourth kingdom of iron was to be the Roman Empire. And when it came to power, this empire was a powerful military machine that brought all of Europe under its control. Now, most people believe that the Roman Empire ended when Rome was destroyed in the year 476 AD. But we now realize that it has had six successive revivals, mostly under the auspices of the Roman Catholic Church, with the last one about to appear. The last part of this prophecy is being fulfilled now in Europe by the feet of clay mixed with iron. Remember, its legs were of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. We read that in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 33. To help you know what is coming and what is happening now in Europe, we would like you to have this free booklet titled The Beast of Revelation, Myth, Metaphor, or soon coming reality. This 44 page booklet explains the meaning of Daniel's prophecies. Simply phone the number on the screen for your free copy of The Beast of Revelation. Notice what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13. Let's turn there if we can to Revelation chapter 13 and verses 16 and 17. He, that is the coming beast, causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
Now, you will want to know the meaning of the symbol 666, which is the mark of the beast. So we invite you to find out about this mark in our free booklet, The Beast of Revelation. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Consider for a moment how Europe compares with the United States. You might be surprised to see how this growing conglomerate already surpasses the world's only superpower in several ways. Let's firstly look at population. The United States has passed the 300 million mark, but the European Union already has 500 million. What about gross domestic product? In 2011, according to the World Bank, the United States GDP was $15.1 trillion dollars while the Europeans achieved $16.5 trillion. That's $1.4 trillion more than the United States. What about the number of workers? Well, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there are 155 million workers in the U.S. labor force, while the EU has more than 200 million workers. And when it comes to oil consumption, the U.S. actually consumes more. They consume 18.8 .8 million barrels per day, while the EU consumes much less, just 14.1 million barrels per day. In many areas, the EU is overtaking the U.S. Europe has many different languages, while the United States has just one. America is still a greater military power than Europe. Great Britain, though, a part of Europe, maintains strong military ties with the United States. So you can understand what is happening in Europe and where it's going to lead in the next few years. We're offering to you this booklet titled The Beast of Revelation. So phone right now for your free copy or go to tomorrowsworld.org. You'll be amazed at how it reveals the connection between Bible prophecy and the world we are living in today. This fascinating booklet will bring alive prophecies for our day and tomorrow's world. What other important fact do we need to understand about the beast of Revelation? The answer? A woman dressed in purple and scarlet will ride upon the same beast mentioned in Revelation chapter 13. Notice verse 3, turning to Revelation chapter 17, and verse 3, And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead, a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. There's an amazing parallel between Europe and this woman who rides the beast. This similarity is found in Greek mythology that goes back to the times of the Greeks and Romans. In fact, the name Europe is derived from the Greek goddess Europa. And according to Greek mythology, a Phoenician woman was seduced by the god Zeus, disguised in the form of a bull, or a beast, and was carried by him to Crete. Though this bull, also known as Taurus, was her lover, she really had power over him. 
All of Europe looks to this story for the origin of their continent. Europa is dear to many of them and their psyche. Notice this Greek two euro coin depicting Europa riding on Taurus's back. Who is the modern day Europa? Some people believe she may be identified by the modern spirit of religious revival that is taking place. They can see that ancient Greece and Rome will once again assert themselves as the cultural and religious leaders in the world. The European Union is about to introduce a new five euro banknote with the same mythical figures being used on it. In the next part of the program, we're going to see how this prophetic woman has and will again ride a beast that will dominate the whole world with trade and commerce. It's exciting, but it's sobering to understand the powerful impact she will have on all who are alive. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. So far, we have seen how the European Union has overtaken the United States in many areas. To understand where this is leading, we need to let God show us that He is the one who controls our destiny. So let's return to chapter 17 of Revelation, and we're going to re be reading here in verse 9. The angel who had shown the apostle John this vision of this woman, riding the beast, explains that the seven heads are seven mountains, that is, governments or kingdoms, upon which the woman sits. Verse 10 continues, five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. In the past, six of these kingdoms have come and gone, and the seventh, that is the last, is about to appear. Since all these previous kings have arisen in Europe, we should expect the last to arise there also. In this scenario, the woman, symbolizing a great church, has power over the decisions of the civil rulers of Europe. She does not have an army or a police force. She doesn't make the laws and enforce them. She leaves that to the civil authorities, but she can and will influence and cause them to do what she wants. Yes, the beast of Revelation is about to rise in Europe. Here at Tomorrow's World, Roderick Meredith and Richard Ames continue to proclaim the same message that they learned from Herbert Armstrong in the 50s and 60s. Let me quote to you, if I can, an article written in the October 1962 Plain Truth magazine, where Herbert Armstrong wrote the following on page 23. This sensational prophecy of Revelation 17 reveals the presently emerging United States of Europe the beast here described is the United Europe now forming that will resurrect the Holy Roman Empire. This beast, the Holy Roman Empire, is once again to come to life. The people of the world will be aghast in wonder when they actually do behold this ancient empire resurrected to political and military life. Now, when he wrote those words in 1962, Germany was still rebuilding after the devastation caused by Allied bombers at the end of the Second World War. But behind the scenes, men of great vision had a plan. Men like Conrad Adenauer and Charles de Gaulle had a vision that would rid Europe of the recurring wars that had taken place over the centuries. 
In a clever way, the European Union has been using the existing national systems to gradually introduce new rules. For example, a French gendarme, that's a French policeman, or a British policeman, known as a bobby, could soon no longer be a French policeman or a British policeman, but a European policeman. Maybe on one day, every European policeman could be wearing the same uniform. Every soldier could be wearing a European soldier's uniform. And it remains to be seen how and when the metamorphosis will occur. Can you see what seems to be happening? The old national institutions in all the countries may soon be seen to be what they are, just a hollow shell. If their inner workings are replaced by new edicts from Brussels, the old national laws will simply disappear. Like a moth forming inside a chrysalis, the old shell will be left behind when the moth emerges. When you receive your free copy of this informative booklet, The Beast of Revelation, you will be able to turn to the center pages and study a well-constructed chart that reveals how the various resurrections of the Holy Roman Empire have taken place. Here we have the diagram enlarged. Notice how the various end-time prophecies in Daniel and Revelation are compiled in a way that you can understand the different animals and the beasts used symbolically by God. Under the first heading is the statue of Daniel 2. Next comes the four beasts of Daniel 7. Then we have the beast of Revelation 13, followed by the harlot riding the scarlet beast. The next two columns give us the symbolic meaning and their historical fulfillment. The key verse for us to remember is in Revelation chapter 17, verse 10. There are also seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The understanding of this verse was revealed in the 1930s to Herbert Armstrong at the time that Benito Mussolini's rule in Italy was taking place. Mussolini had recognized the Vatican as a sovereign state in 1929 and in turn the church allowed him to declare himself emperor. He set about to conquer Ethiopia and recreate the Holy Roman Empire. A treaty between Mussolini and Hitler brought Germany into this orbit and it all ended at the end of World War II. Do you realize that you are about to experience something that will be a shock to the world when it happens? Suddenly, another Holy Roman Empire will be proclaimed and the crowning of another emperor will take place. When this happens, you will know that he will rule only a short time. Do you remember what it said in Revelation 17, 10? And when he comes, he must continue a short time. Though this time will be short, it will be long enough for the world to experience one of the most fabulous times of prosperity ever. But then the Babylonian harlot who will ride the beast for only a short time will be destroyed by the power of God. Let me read to you what is written in Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18, where we read, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the merchants of the earth have become rich with the abundance of her luxury. The Bible describes how the rulers who gave their power to the woman turn on her and hate her. It says, And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot and make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. The whole European political and religious system will fail and fall. And as it collapses, hear what the merchants of the earth will cry out. We read that here in the book of Revelation. Once again, the very end of the Babylonian system 
that has been resurrected, it says, And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise any more of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, of bronze, iron and marble. In verse 17, we read, For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. The demise of the great power will be sudden and total. That's right. This will be the end of the continent of Europe's control over the whole world. Be sure to request your free copy of The Beast of Revelation. You'll be glad you did. Phone now to receive your personal copy of this booklet that will explain more about what lies ahead for Europe and the rest of the world. We have seen how a dramatic change in world power is taking place. We know that it's affecting the lives of millions of people. But what about you? How can you prepare for the times ahead? In Revelation 18 verse 4, God says, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. He also tells us that if we turn to him, and refuse to participate in the manners and the customs of this world's religions and keep His laws, He will protect us from the curses that will fall upon the rest of the world. He tells us, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. We're here to teach and instruct those whom God is calling and we hope that we have seen in our Bibles today a message that will be of help to you. Be sure to join us next week at the same time as Roderick Meredith and Richard Ames bring you important information to help you follow the words of your Bible and the good news of tomorrow's world. Wallace Smith and I will also introduce topics of vital interest to you. Until then, goodbye friends. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. To view the Tomorrow's World telecast or request today's free offer, visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. And remember to find us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.